Holly Logan got a call telling her her nine year old daughter Seven's kidney stopped functioning. Now their race to get her a working kidney is almost to the finish line. New at 10, 2 News Mason Morrow talked with Seven about her journey and her mother's one last cry for help. Nine year old Seven Spates used to spend her days of adolescence in the schoolyard at Dove School of Discovery. Back in her room, painting and drawing childhood dreams of becoming a chef or a teacher. I didn't really feel like something was wrong. Now her days are spent in a hospital bed. Her only dream is a chance to grow up to live out her dreams. It's real. I have to remind myself every every day almost that this is happening and um, like this is this is our reality. In March of last year, Natalie Logan drove her then eight year old daughter to the doctor to scan her kidneys and bladder wall for a severe urinary tract infection. That's when we found out that her kidneys had gone into failure. A seven month pregnant Logan rushed seven here to St. Francis Hospital where a doctor had the eight year old life flight to Oklahoma City to undergo emergency treatment for stage five kidney failure. That's when it all began. Logan says seven was immediately started on dialysis to wash toxins out of her system. Total kidney failure came with complications. Logan says her daughter experienced temporary heart failure pancreatitis and brain swelling that caused blindness to see your child like cry for you and tell you mommy I can't see you I can't see you it's incredibly scary I didn't know if she was going to regain her sight seven's kidneys were removed in December and she spent her ninth birthday Christmas and New Year's hooked to a hospital bed her kidneys quit on her but seven isn't giving up I just look back um at the picture when I was in the hospital and just think to myself, like, I really won't do that. She's not in the clear yet, but Seven was just cleared to receive her kidney transplant. Luckily, the donor is someone she knows pretty well. Mine is honey and hers is biscuit. So the one that I give her is named Biscuit. The honey to her biscuit. For eight years, the mother to an only daughter. This is my daughter. This is like the love of my life. Gifting her another chance at life. The chance to see Seven grow up and live her dreams of leading a cooking line or a classroom. Reporting Mason Morrow, 2 News. What a precious little girl. Now, Logan tells us she's aiming for the kidney transplant to happen in August, and right now she's hoping to raise enough money for medical expenses after the transplant. If you're interested in donating, we have all of the information on KJRH.com. Just search for this story. Now, your Two Works For You first forecast, sponsored by Executive Homes. Boy, was it hot today or what? We officially hit 90 degrees for the first time this year here in eastern Oklahoma. So it was hot and it was humid as well. As a result of the humidity, a heat advisory has been issued for Bartlesville, Tulsa, Mulgee, uh, Muskogee, and Claremore and areas to the west through the next couple of days. Heat index values still making it feel like the mid 80s right now in Tulsa. Bartlesville feels like 86 degrees. Coffeeville still feeling like 90 degrees at the 10 o'clock hour. So it is hot. And it is humid as we see our forecast for tomorrow. We're going to start off the day in the mid 70s, climb the lower 90s with heat index values tomorrow at 102. That's what it's going to feel like by the time you're heading home from work. We'll update you on your weekend forecast and a look at the next 10 days coming away in about 10 minutes. Thank you, Mike. Tulsa's pedestrian bridge has been a familiar sight for more than 100 years, and soon it will only be a memory. Demolition continued today across the Arkansas River. The bridge was cut off from Riverside during construction of the gathering place, and once it was declared unsafe, plans for its replacement began. Work on a new bridge was supposed to start in 2018, but progress came to a standstill while the city of Tulsa worked on a permit through the Army Corps of Engineers. Now that work is moving forward, engineers say, it's hard to see the old bridge go, but keeping it simply wasn't realistic. Financially, we couldn't do the, the add on to it. It didn't make a whole lot of sense to spend you know, millions of dollars to do that when we could replace the structure with something new and iconic. 
The new bridge, called the Gateway, is expected to be finished by spring of 2023. While the new Greenwood Rising Museum is opening its doors, giving people in Tulsa a limited preview of its exhibit. The museum provides an immersive experience for visitors, broken up into three main themes. The first is the Greenwood Spirit, which captures the essence of Black Wall Street before it was destroyed. Next is the Ark of Oppression, which tells the story of Rachel's tension here in America. And last is the Journey to Reconciliation, which shows Greenwood's efforts to rebuild. Now those behind the exhibit say it's mostly about letting people take a walk through history so they can see just how vibrant Tulsa's black community was. The whole goal was not to immerse people in the tragedy and the massacre, but it's to educate everyone and enlighten them of how incredible the Oklahoma Territory was, uh, a respite, a paradise for black citizens at the turn of the century. You can see the limited preview through the end of the week, and the museum will then close again to put on the finishing touches before its grand opening next month. Top U.S. health experts are sending out a strong warning about the COVID-19 Delta variant. First discovered in India, the Delta variant is responsible for the recent surge in cases there and the thousands of deaths that followed. Experts say this variant is more contagious and deadly, and it's spreading rapidly among younger people. They say it could be a big problem for the U.S. if it becomes the dominant strain here. The Delta variant really is a double threat because it is both more infectious and it can evade our immune responses. The pandemic is definitely not over for those who are not vaccinated. Right now, 6% of new COVID infections in the U.S. are from the Delta variant. It's still highly susceptible for two doses of the vaccine. But if you've only had one shot, doctors say you're only about 33% protected against this new strain. Well, President Joe Biden arrived in England today for his first overseas trip as president. His mission is to revitalize U.S. alliances across Europe. Alice Barr has the latest from Washington. President Biden arriving in the U.K. today for his first foreign trip as president, one focused on strengthening ties with America's European allies. He's already looking ahead to a high-stakes meeting with Russian President Vladimir Putin one week from today. Make it clear to Putin and to uh, China that Europe and the United States are tight. The pandemic, trade, climate change and cybersecurity all on the agenda for the G7 summit of world leaders, with President Biden eager to break away from his predecessor's America first policy. The British ambassador to the U.S. optimistic the longtime allies can overcome what she called a trust deficit over the past few years. Most people uh, see the United States as a beacon for democracy. The president leaving Washington right after cutting off negotiations with Senate Republicans that failed to reach a deal on infrastructure. I'm a bit disappointed and frustrated that the, that the White House really uh, kept moving the ball on me. Another group of bipartisan negotiators now picking up the ball, even as Democrats prepare to push through a massive plan on their own. The West Virginia moderate Joe Manchin may not go along. I never give up. I never give up. Senator Manchin also standing in the way of Democrats' efforts to force through voting rights protections, though bipartisan talks over police reform are showing promise. Key tests for the president's agenda at home and abroad. President Biden has his first bilateral meeting tomorrow with U.K. Prime Minister Boris Johnson. He will later become the 12th serving U.S. president to meet with Queen Elizabeth. In Washington, Alice Barr, NBC News. The president made it to Europe today, but only after his flight was delayed because of cicadas. Next, we're taking a closer look at all the ways Brood X is stirring up trouble on the East Coast. Plus, getting back on the wagon after a year in hibernation. How vaccinated Americans are celebrating the return to normal just in time for summer. The brood egg cicadas have hit their peak on the East Coast and they're causing quite a lot of drama. Although they're harmless, having billions of cicadas flying around is starting to get problematic from causing car crashes to disrupting sporting events, even grounding planes. Brood X is breaking news. Cicadas grounded the White House press corps flight on its way to Europe for President Biden's first foreign trip. The pesky insects, apparently to blame for mechanical issues on the plane. The bugs break out from underground every 17 years by the billions. A minor inconvenience for some, a major headache for others. 
This car accident in Cincinnati caused by a cicada that flew through an open window and into the driver's face. Also in Ohio, the usually quiet of golf, disrupted by a noisy cicada symphony at this year's Memorial Tournament. It comes as the U.S. Open of Golf is set to kick off in Maryland, a major cicada epicenter. It's definitely going to be a mental toughness challenge for players out here today. The cicadas so bad in some places. The National Weather Service's radar is actually spotting giant swarms. We've been talking about the cicadas coming out, right? Yeah. Yes. Well, the Washington, D.C. radar, there were so many cicadas in the air wow. that the cicadas were picked up on radar. Whoa. I mean, that's crazy stuff. Their sounds inescapable. The cicadas are making that sound because it's all about romance. This is the male cicada trying to convince that special someone that she should be the mother of his nymphs. He's putting on his very best performance. Frustrated drivers finding ways to keep their cars clear and clean. They just flying through, get a lot of splat on them, and it don't come off. <laughs> but if you can manage to avoid cicada mayhem, perhaps you can appreciate Mother Nature's unique beauty. To me, they're fantastic. They only come out once every 17 years for a spectacle unparalleled anywhere else on the planet. They are just unique, special creatures. As more Americans get vaccinated, they're beginning to emerge from their pandemic hibernation just in time for summer. They're ditching the sweatpants, exercising, and getting back out there, all in an effort to lose the COVID-15 they gained during COVID-19. Now, fitness coaches say surviving the pandemic was a struggle, but now they're seeing huge surges, and they think people are appreciating life and freedom more than ever before. I mean, business dropped by 90%. It was insane. People are coming back and they're excited. People want to be with people. Some say the return to normal isn't going as smoothly as they thought it would. And the hardest part has been figuring out how to survive a day in business clothes and heels. Now your two works for you weather sponsored by Executive Homes. All right, as we look at dual Doppler right now, we've seen a few pop-up showers uh, develop, one southwest of Delaware, that is since weekend. One near Talala, that uh, is weakening at this hour, might see uh, some showers in your area. Northwest of Welch, still have a little shower remaining, but that's showing signs of decaying. These are going to weaken over the next hour. Here in the metro, we had a beautiful sun shot. I know this is your pictures, but this is actually my picture I took. Snapped it off of our Dave's Clam RV Weather Camera Network CityPlex Tower. And there goes the sunset on the hottest day of the year so far. We finally climbed to 90 degrees. Uh, last year we hit it in March. Uh, this year, obviously, really late in the season. The latest is uh, June 21st. We were close to a record, but we didn't break it. 81 degrees and nice and warm across the central United States. You can see where the clouds and the rain, that cool air that we were dealing with the past couple weeks, has now shifted east. Meanwhile, the southwest continues to heat up. Phoenix at 98 degrees, but it is a dry heat. Don't forget that. It feels cooler than the actual air temperature shows. Now, future track radar through the remainder of the night. A few pop up shower storms possible uh, as we head into tomorrow morning, but uh, overall, though, the chances for rain in your area over the next couple of hours less than 20%. Outside right now, we have a calm conditions. It's warm, it's humid outside. The next couple of days, you're going to be good to go for any practices or games. Uh, even the Tulsa Tough, there is a chance for a few isolated thunderstorms Friday night, Saturday morning. Not too concerned about a widespread rain. So we've got the green check marks. Something unusual compared to the past couple weeks or the past month. This weekend will be hot and humid. You do need to use caution if you're going to be outside for a prolonged period of time. Make sure you're drinking plenty of water. Uh, keep yourself hydrated uh, with clear liquids. Um, this weekend, the heat index value is going to be around 103 to 106. So that's just unbearable because you have temperatures in the lower 90s and you have that high of heat index. That means humidity is ridiculously high and it will be this weekend. 81 degrees, the dew point 74 climbed into the upper 70s. I think Bixby even hit an 80 degree dew point today, which is just miserable as far as humidity is concerned. East-southeast wind at 5 miles per hour, slowly 
pulling that sludge of moisture over us. 73 right now in Tulsa, or 73 tomorrow morning, I should say, prior 73 on Mulgee, 73. By afternoon, it's going to be hot and sticky, lower 90s once again, so we're going to go day two of 90 degree or warmer for our th uh, Thursday afternoon. Again, hot and sticky. 75 Friday morning, 93 Friday afternoon, 90 on Saturday with a slight chance for an isolated shower and storm. Lower 90s on Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. As we see this stretch of 90 degree heat, we might, we might, Caden, get a little relief by the end of next week with lower humidity. Fingers crossed.